Greetings, and thank you for clicking on this video about how to calculate the change in productivity. My name is Professor Bolton, and my YouTube channel is Operations and Supply Chain University. On my channel, you can find 60 full-length lecture recordings on various supply chain and operations topics generally taught in a university setting, and other short videos like this one that solely focus on how to solve the key formulas that are taught in my courses. At the end of this video, there's a slide that shows all of the content that can be found on our website, like practice problems, Microsoft Excel templates, and free copies of every chapter outline taught in this course. This video is on productivity changes. I'm going to define productivity, explain the productivity formula and its uses, and then I'll go through th four problems to help you get a good understanding of how to solve productivity. If you'd like a more in-depth de definition and explanation of productivity and productivity change, please see the full-length lecture recording on this channel. On the flip side of that, if you're already familiar with how productivity formula and how to use it, feel free to jump ahead about two minutes and you can get straight to the examples I'm gonna be covering today. All right, productivity is a measure of the effective use of resources expressed as the ratio of the outputs of the process to the inputs. The objective is to improve the productivity by improving the ratio. The formula is simple, it's just productivity equals units produced, otherwise known as the outputs, divided by the inputs used. Productivity ratios can be useful for planning workforce requirements, scheduling equipment, and financial analysis. We're gonna go over three different productivity formulas. The first is partial measures, and it can also be called single factor productivity because you are looking at the total outputs versus one single input. It's a very useful formula when comparing one measure of the business like labor or machinery. The second formula is multi-factor measures. I find this gauge a great gauge for measuring productivity because theoretically, if an organization hires more laborers or buys more capital equipment, they should become more productive. And this formula helps us to compare that. The third and final formula calculates total measures. Total measures is useful when you are comparing total output for a factory on a year over year basis because there's so many different inputs that are critical to the productivity. It can also be used to measure the output of an entire economy. Productivity growth, or the decline, is the increase, or the decrease, in productivity from one period to the next relative to the productivity of the previous period. One thing that's tricky about this formula is that many times students will get the wrong answer if you just simply plug it into Microsoft Excel due to the rounding. So make sure that you complete the calculation for the numerator and then put that on top of the denominator and multiply that by 100 to get the productivity change. Let's go over our first example, problem number one. What is the growth change if productivity increased from 80 to 84? So for this example, 84 is your current productivity and 80 is your previous productivity because your productivity increased from one period to the next, it went from 80 to 84. So 84 is your current productivity, 80 is your previous productivity. You're going to take 84 minus 80 equals four. Four divided by 80 and multiplied by 100 gives you 5%. Let's do a little more complicated problem. Consider a division of Murphy chemicals that produces water purification crystals for swimming pools. The major inputs used in the production process are labor, raw materials, and energy. For 2024, labor costs are 180,000, raw material costs are 30,000, and energy costs are 5,000. For 2025, labor costs are $350,000, raw material costs are $40,000, and energy costs are $6,000. Murphy Chemicals produced 100,000 pounds of crystals in 2024 and 150,000 pounds in 2025. The question is, has productivity increased or declined between 2024 and 2025? So two things I want to point out before we go into solving this problem. Number one, in some of my previous lecture recordings, I want to make sure that you realize that just because the outputs increased from 100,000 pounds to 150,000 pounds does not mean productivity increased. Production did and your outputs did, but it doesn't mean productivity did. And then the second thing I wanna highlight is that this question is asking for total measures or multi-factor measures because it's given you three different inputs and it's asking you to calculate the change. So it's asking you to look at those three different inputs. 
So those inputs are down at the bottom right now. You can see you've got your labor, your raw materials, and your energy, and your outputs, which are your crystals, for 2024 and 2025. So first we have to calculate the productivity in 2024. You've got 100,000 pounds or $100,000 worth of your outputs for your crystals divided by your three inputs of labor, raw materials, and energy. That's gonna give you 0.465. So that is your productivity for 2024. For 2025, your outputs are higher. You have $150,000 worth of outputs, but some of your inputs definitely went up as well. You've got your labor, raw materials, and energy, and you can see that labor definitely went up. In fact, it almost doubled from year over year basis. So your productivity is 0.379 for 2025. So to calculate the productivity change, you're gonna take your current productivity, which is 0.379, minus your previous productivity, which is 0.465. You're going to do that calculation and you get negative 0.086. And when you take negative 0.086 divided by 0.465 multiplied by 100, you get a negative 18.49%. So productivity definitely got worse from 2024 to 2025 because those labor inputs skyrocketed. Problem number three. Johnny's Carpet Cleaning Service had revenues that averaged $70,000 per week in April and $60,000 per week in May. During both months, the company employed six full-time workers at 40 hours per week. In April, the firm also had four part-time workers working 25 hours per week. But in May, there was only three part-time workers and they worked 10 hours per week. So our question is, what is the percentage change in labor productivity from April to May for Johnny's Carpet Cleaning Service? All right, once again, all of your inputs, which is your full-time employees and your part-time employees are down at the bottom right of the screen for both April and for May. Your outputs were given to you of $70,000 worth of revenue in April and $60,000 worth of outputs in May. So let's calculate our April productivity. You've got 240 hours worth of full-time workers plus 100 hours of part-time workers. That gives you 340 hours. So your April productivity is $70,000 divided by 340 hours, which is your inputs. That gets you 205.88 for April productivity. Now we go into May. Your inputs are 240 hours worth of full-time workers again. You calculate that by taking six times 40. Your part-time workers, it went down a little bit. You've only got three of them at 10 hours each, so your part-time workers are 30 hours per week, so you're, two, you're at 270 hours in May. So to calculate your May productivity, you're gonna take $60,000 divided by 270 hours, and that's gonna give you 222.22. So to calculate the change in productivity, your current productivity minus your previous productivity, you're gonna take 222.22, minus 205.88, that's going to give you 16.3. Then you take 16.3 divided by 205.88, multiply that by 100, and you're gonna get a 7.94 increase in productivity from April to May. So once again, even though your revenue went down and your outputs went down, so did your inputs, so you were more productive. All right, our last problem for today, see below for Green Valley Landscaping's inputs and outputs for 2024 and 2025. Given this info, what was the percentage change in labor productivity? I wanted to throw this question in there because I gave you more information than you needed. You can see that your inputs are labor, raw materials, energy, capital, and other. And all I asked for was the change in labor productivity. So just be careful in case you want to calculate just for one single factor productivity, which in this case is labor. So your 2024 productivity is $300,000 in sales divided by 40,000 hours or $40,000 of labor, and that's gonna give you 7.5 labor productivity. For 2025, you've got $330,000 in sales. 
you've got $43,000 worth of costs in labor. So your labor productivity is 7.67 for 2025. To calculate the productivity change, you simply take 7.67 minus 7.5, and that gives you 0.17. Then you divide 0.17 divided by 7.50 multiply that by 100% and you're going to get a labor productivity increase of 2.33%. We did not calculate total productivity, so we don't know if total productivity increased or decreased because this question only asked for the change in labor productivity. So that is all for today. Before I let you go, I wanted to share with you some content that can be found on our website at operationsuniversity.org. On our website, you can find practice problems, Microsoft Excel templates for solving these formulas and helping complete some of your homework problems. There are step-by-step -step guides for how to solve calculations. And then all of the chapter outlines that I teach in my courses can be downloaded for free. There's also options for Lane Six Sigma training and certifications. So there's a ton of additional content on our website, which will help you succeed in studying and your coursework. Thanks for watching this video on how to calculate productivity changes. As a reminder, please like this video and subscribe to our channel. If you decide to become a member of our channel, you'll get exclusive access to our new videos and a lot of the content that I just mentioned that we sell on our website is free of charge. Thanks again for watching and have a great day.